Chipad Dandi Maharaj. Chipad Dandi Maharaj, welcome. And our obeisances to Maharaj, our obeisances to each of you. We don't give obeisances respect to a sannyasi. When the first time we see them, we should fast the whole day. Gurudev said, this is the case. He said, doesn't mean you have to go down on the ground, but must be just respect. And because Gurudev said, if in, we are in Vrindavan with so many sannyasis, then we will go down on the ground in the rain and everything else. And No, but give respect. That must be in the heart. All right. So, respect to you all. And let us begin with our mini Vandana. Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yutapada Kamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sabrata Sahagan Raghurnatan Vitam Tam Saji Sarvetam Savarutam Parijan Sahitan Krishna Chaitan Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Saha Dana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitam Om Jnana Timirandasya Jnanandana Shalakaya Chakshuran Militam Jena Tasvai Shri Gurave Nama Namo Mahabharanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Nam Gauratije Nama Vancha Kalpatrubhya Stra Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha Patitana Bhavan Vaishnava Namo Namaha. Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityanan. Shri Advaita Kadatara. Shri Vasadi. Shri Gaura Bhakta Vrinda. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. Rama Rama. Hare Hare. And just see we chant Hare Krishna and Shri Lake Devi Nasi Arams. <laughs> And Hindu Lake Devi is with us. Sorry, I don't have my specs on. I've got a smaller, smaller screen here. And I'm sure I expect a devotee with us. I can't see. It's all good to have you with us. And um, no, I think the, you could say Varupa Devi, we mentioned at the very beginning. Oh, Muktinath, oh is here with us also. And Kaushali, Hare Krishna, Indu Lake Devi, and Leel Lamoy looking after us, or Dana, Dana also joining us. So to all of you, you who are here now and more joining, then my uh, uh, welcome, my greetings, my welcome and my blessings. So often we ask, so what is your new so first I'll begin with my news and then someone gives some news. And actually, well, oh, uh, today also, can we reserve a special slot to hear from Sri Lanka? Because she's had VIP guests. Huh? Because she has VIP guests. They've had some special programs. They've not been streaming the programs. So here we are in separation on another side of the world. So we'll invite Sri Lake just in a moment. Somehow, somehow the waiting room is turned on. Oh, I know, Lila Monica was meant to be after. Okay, sorry. Okay, I'll stop trying to answer things that come up on the screen. So news from here is that I'm actually near Rome where at a retreat and the retreat is of the graduation of yoga students. And they're the uh, yoga students who are fortunate to have a Vaishnava yoga teacher. Otherwise, it is only mundane. And the Vaishnava yoga teacher is Chaitanya Moy David Asi. And being assisted by her better half, she may say, and he may say, she's her better half. But Dananjaya. Dananjaya Prabhu and Chaitanya Moy, they are 
uh, running a retreat and it's but it's a graduation so they already know each other it's not a new gathering and they're just starting to learn something so they have a good foundation in yoga but what yoga is for because that's exactly what Chaitanya Moy does and that really that's what all yoga teachers should do like from the beginning to let their students know okay I'm your teacher I do Yoga, I teach yoga, it's good for your health, it's good for this, that, and the other. But it is a, on a journey. It's a yoga journey to Krishna. And the Bhakti yoga is the yoga that we should all be uh, doing, no matter what else we do. Whether we do yoga, running, or, or no kind of exercise at all. Whatever we should be doing that. So anyway... She's got a group of very presentable students and we've uh, got, the, uh, they're doing a retreat, there's a schedule and it's as well as the schedule, then we try to be available uh, so that when they have their free times, we can, we can answer questions and discuss. And I can just mention just a couple of things that uh, how... Guru Maharaj gives the example that if we give, sometimes we think, oh, if we give something, we lose it. Oh, I'm giving, so I don't have it anymore. But if we consider about knowledge, then if we give knowledge, like a university a professor, the professor is not a professor in the beginning, he's a student. And then one day he's got to stand on the other side of the room and tell people things. But just because he tells, as a university professor, that 4 plus 4 equals 8, it doesn't mean that he's lost that knowledge. Rather, it will be more implanted in his own uh, uh, nature that, yes, 4 plus 4 equals 8. So, in the terms of spiritual life, then we need to share with others and by sharing with others, we don't lose what we have. Rather, it's Mahaprabhu's method, first of all, to tell others what we, what is valuable, what we can share with them. Um, but that will consolidate it in us as well. We will not be the loser by it. So we must try to give something. So anyhow, uh, Chaitanya Moy, who is a, a yoga a teacher trainer as well as a teacher for many years for many years and she's got diplomas and all these things she's been on all these particular courses uh mostly ah, please go thank you mostly. anyway she is not nourished by teaching yoga you know exercise reading this is good for your liver this is good for your nose this is good for your ear anyway whatever it may be and she was thinking to change. But then this group of students, they somehow, Krishna sent them along, they reciprocated very well. And so she, now she's hurried. No, I see these students, we can do, no, we're doing something good. They're listening to me. They're not, as soon as I told, mentioned Bhagavad Gita, they said, they're not just turning away. No, no, we just want to look. We just want to look beautiful. We just want to look handsome like this. Which, you know, let's face it, is some of the motive for, in the West, for, at least, for people to come to yoga. They want to, the, the men want to be strong, you know, have their crippling muscles, and the women want to be beautiful, well-shaped. So, you know, in the beginning, it may be that motive. So sometimes... And it happened, you know, sort of happened again and again. She's getting students who don't want to hear really about Bhagavad Gita. They turn off, they think, oh, that fanaticism. That's not what we want. We just, just teach us yoga. But this group, she's got a group which are very presentable and interested. And every one of them, by the way, is trying to chant the holy name when we are leading and following. And yesterday we were also chanting, uh, including Radha Ramana Ari Go, Dada Dada Go. 
Govinda, Daya, Daya, Gopal. And we are no singing is not the good thing for Zoom. Cuts me out. But the word, uh, the name, Radha Ramana Hari. And of course, I shouldn't really have thought, use that particular series of names because I think nobody almost can catch, if they're not familiar with Radha Raman and Hari, can catch Radha Raman Hari, the first of singing. But they all tried very much and uh, they tried to sing. And so, anyway, just to say that I saw that if you get a, a, a good teacher and you get good students, there's something very ha happy takes place, nourishing, something nourishing takes place. And of course, this is the case in spiritual life. And then we see our example, I mean, super example of Guru Maharaj and Guru Srila Govinda Maharaj, like the, the best student you could possibly to have. He hears, he remembers, he puts it in his mind. He's faithful, he's loyal, he's not questioning it. He's like, why, why, why? This kind of nature. And he's just there for Guru Maharaj. And Guru Maharaj is a suitable recipient. And we've just seen their sweet nature. And of course, we can't enter into depths of their um, backward and forward of slokas and Slokas means they're not just saying verses because they've heard some verse. They're saying verses with the substance inside. So just a, you know, some reflection and many things happening. And this is just some reflection of how if we, if we get good listeners, then the reciprocation, it's not just a one-sided or someone is learning. Both are getting nourishment. Nourishment by giving and nourishment by receiving. And this is the, the Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu Smaranam Parasavim. This is our duty. We are doing service to our masters by hearing and remembering and repeating. And so we need to try to do this not with four plus four equals, what was it? Seven, nine, mm, somewhere around there. Not with just the hearing and remembering and repeating about something physical, but hear, remember, and, and repeat about something else. What's that something else? The spiritual sign, our journey home, to hear about Vrindava, to hear about the destination. As we have heard it from those who know that place, if an agent from that world comes here, then what great fortune is that to the world? And those that section of agents has come, headed by Mahaprabhu a few months ago, let us be reminded. I mean, 500 years ago, but here, as those in Brazil know, here nearby there's a, a town where they have an aqueduct, impressive aqueduct and, and walls and castles from the Roman time, before Christ, going back, I do not know, I'm, I don't know, but 2,500 years or 3,000 years, still standing. So 500 years ago is very relatable. It's not the distant past when people could stand on you know, one leg and do all sorts of things for 1,000 years. We, you can't do it today. We don't live at that. Anyway, so this is just a little news from here, from like the living world of sharing Krishna consciousness with, with um, students who are somewhat prepared. They've got some good uh, background. They're trying to do something good. And by already being chanting the holy name for a year, so introduced to that in the beginning, then we have heard that if you chant the holy name, some remarkable changes happen in the heart of everyone, of the meat eaters. I mean, so many of us, sorry to say, you know, we're coming from the meat eater world. And so, you know, from the very uh, disqualified heart, ma magical things happen by the chanting of the holy name. So they've been chanting the holy name. And so now 
we are here with them and chanting Hare Krishna and in a little piece of really extremely beautiful nature. And you can, it, it is a reminder of Vrindavan. The hills, the forests, the green grass area, the extremely blue sky, extremely green leaves and all those other things. And not the slightest sound of any man sound. You can't hear a motor car, you can't hear an airplane. And for like all this time, it is, it is quite a, 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 a special place that they found. But I have to say that looking at all the beauty and the gentleness and all these things, then we still have to be a little aloof and we mustn't be attracted even by all the heavenly things. It could be this, could be like heaven. In how much more beautiful can heaven be than this? No, we can think. But we have to not be attracted. We have to be able to cross over all of the pains of this mundane world. And the big benefit, though, is it's a reminder of Vrindavan. And we know it's not Vrindavan. We can't say, oh, this is Vrindavan. But it's a reminder. It's that, that beauty that Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita. You know, whatever beautiful things, whatever wonderful things you see, just understand that. So what's the point of me really explaining my glories? I'm a little glorious, Arjun. Just trying to understand that. But what's the point of explaining them all? When you see anything wonderful, and just know it's just a tiny spark of my energy. And then finally, my home is Prajna. My home is Vrindavan. So anyway, lots of things. And of course, when we visit a new place and we're seeing the world at a little different angle, the world in a different angle of the way other people see it. Also. Okay, anyway, we comment lots of things. But here we are, and let us now come to Tripad Dandi Maharaj first, and then Sri Lake will come to you in a moment. But there is some red cloth in sannyasi cloth in the room. Dandi Maharaj, just a little bit of back to back to basics. <clears throat> of, we say back to back to back, but actually back to basics. Back or forward, it's not a matter, it's Always in the net. Maharaj. Okay. Maharaj, Today is Ganga Puja Day, and today is Appearance Day of Ganga Devi, and also Appearance Day of Ganga Mata Goswami, and Disappearance Day of Srila Baldevi Yabusha. It's our great saints, Ganga Devi, yourself. Ganga Devi, so of course, great uh, saint, uh, river and uh, goddess, Ganga Devi. Uh, Gurudev was very fond of uh, bathing in Ganges, Ganga, in, in, in Ganga. So, <coughs> this. Uh, Ganga Devi was especially blessed in Kali Yuga because Mahaprabhu appeared in the shores of Ganga Devi. So, Brindavan Khan is the shore of Yamuna, Yamuna Devi, and Ganga Devi was uh, a little sad about it because the Lord was playful on the shore of Yamuna Devi, and Ganga Devi felt uh, he Direct of the Lord's uh, mercy. But then Mahaprabhu appeared in Ganga Devi's shows. So Ganga Devi was very, very happy. It was extremely happy. So, Mahaprabhu was bathing in Ganga's water. And so many devotees of Mahaprabhu was also bathing in Ganga's water. So it is uh, very. Um, mystical uh, uh, history about appearance of Ganga Devi in this world. 
because first for one day make a hole in the universe. So he gave the mercy to Bali Maharaj, Bali Raj, and Ramana Dev for his three crime, he made three steps. So he made a hole in the in the shell of the universe once. And then after so many things what was happening, Bagirat, Maharaj Bagirat, carrying uh, of uh, his uh, hole. Ma Maharaj, can can you move or can somebody move the microphone a bit nearer to you? It's actually very distorted sound, or in, perhaps the microphone is covered. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Then uh, this King Bagirat was uh, caring uh, about uh, his. Uh, his uh, grand grand fathers maybe some maybe he was uh, born into ashes by by Kapila Sage was uh, uh, such a yuga such a yuga but Kapila Kapila Sage uh, cursed the uh, songs uh, of uh, Sagara King. He was angry. Then, uh, then uh, uh, songs uh, were died, and Sagara King uh, he himself prayed. <clears throat> For God, for Ganga water, because only waters of Holy Ganga could awake his song again. But King himself was unsuccessful in, in his praying. And uh, one song and uh, grand song was also unsuccessful. The grand, grand song for King Bhagirat was successful and uh, holy ganga so <clears throat> wanted to come from the uh, uh, heaven world to this uh, earth and uh, so king bagarat was riding in front of uh, from ganga showing the way and ganga was uh, moving after king bagarat he was riding, 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 and, it's, and the, so, so many stories uh, occurred, like uh, Lord Shiva um, <clears throat> accepted Ganga's water on uh, his head, so um, uh, Gurudev uh, very uh, liked this uh, um, uh, Lord uh, Shiva's pastime, so he installed the <clears throat> Mahadev in uh, our Navadip Mat. Uh, and uh, Gurudev also wrote a beautiful Pranam mantra to Shiva holding Ganga's water. Ganga Shiva Pranam mantra. I, I, but I don't remember now. Maybe so it's by, by, by heart. So it's very beautiful. And uh, also we, we read in Navadip Tham Mahatma that was the while Ganga was uh, running, then uh, was uh, ashram of uh, Jahnu Rishi here in Navadip. And uh, this ashram was overwhelmed by waters of Ganga. And Jahnu Rishi was so angry. And he suddenly um, he merged all the waters of Ganga into his body. So Ganga was praying to this uh, Rishi, uh, in, in, being uh, in, in this body, young Ganga was praying, <laughs> please uh, uh, 
release me. Please release me. So <clears throat> after some uh, after some time, and so King Bagarat also prayed to do this Rishi. After some time, uh, Rishi uh, relieved, uh, relieved, relieved, relieved. Uh, Ganga from his air. So, uh, then science found and, and science we, we, we called Ganga Devi Jatnavi. Jatnavi Devi. And then, Jatnavi also the name of the consort of Gopishnama, Jatnavi Devi. So also name of Ganga Devi. So, so many species of events occurred this day. Jai Maharaj. Many thanks for the reminder. <clears throat> for, some, for some, it's still yesterday, and so they look forward to that. But so many thanks for the reminder. And also in the context of the Ganga Puja and being at the River Ganges, then interestingly, Guru Maharaj and Gurudev disapproved that the devotees all go on this day down to the Ganges and I participate in what the, the general mm -hmm. Hindu are doing. And we may think, oh, but we know that Guru Maharaj used to bathe in the Ganges every day in the earlier days. We know that Guru Dev is pleased to bathe in the Ganges. But it comes down to the conception of the bather, the conception of going to the Ganges. And to show how you know, they are aware Guru Dev and Guru Maharaj are aware of how the devotees represent the spiritual master, how the devotees represent the line of thinking. Then Guru Maharaj and Guru Dev, they disapprove. They, and Guru Dev said that, that the general people will think that we are doing the same as them, that, that we are giving honor for what they are doing. They are using Ganga as a a way of cleansing their sins. But we are, use, we are using Ganga. We are coming to worship Ganga and to give honor to her. And as the, the foot wash of the law, most sacred. And one of you can say who it was. One of our great charges, great examples from the past um, I'm not sure which one I better not say, but I think, you know, <laughs> uh, would not go and bathe in the Gang, would not go there in the daytime because he couldn't tolerate seeing people bathing there, washing their clothes, brushing their teeth, all these things in the Ganges water. So he would go to the Ganges in the night when no one was there and go and give his worship. And this kind of standard internal is the standard of Guru Dev and Guru Maharaj. So when we are in like the Hindu land, we also have to be careful and understand what did, what was Guru Maharaj and Guru Dev's well, opinion, their way to approach the Ganga, Puja day, etc. So this is just a little reminder from having been with Guru Dev. And when we are in the holy dam, when we are at the address which says something, something, Navadeep, India, post office, Navadeep, India, then we have to be a little careful about how our dealings are and not to become familiar with everything. They're familiar with, oh yes, going to Yoga Pit where Mahaprabhu was born, I'm going to go to the Ganges, many things. And we have to. Uh, keep Guru Maharaj and Guru Dev's um, conception on our head. Remember their ideal, their ideal on our head. Yes, Maharaj. And Maharaj, just to let you know, because you, you probably can't, well, you can't hear what it is. The microphone, uh, either is covered or something, it's a little difficult to hear. So perhaps a little experiment by Leela Sundar Prabhu or something with the phone. Maybe how it is sitting, I'm not sure. But very, Maharaj, very happy for the reminder. Definitely happy for the reminder. 
and then validate with the person's appearance, appearance day, is it? Right. Disappearance. Disappearance, huh? day. Disappearance, disappearance day. day. Disappearance day. Disappearance day. Disappearance day. And Ganga Mata Goswami's appearance day or disappearance. Appearance. Which? appearance. Appearance. Okay. Perfect. All right. So Sri Lake David Ansi. You're ready. And you're you're ever ready. You're that kind of nature devotee. You're ever ready. We can put even put you on the spot, but we you know we're going to ask for you to say to share a few words with us. So in your living way of presenting Krishna consciousness in sweet Lake City, then let us hear from you. Turn on them. Dandavatandi Maharaj, Mercy, Parmananda Prabhu there, and all the devotees. Super sweet to see everybody. Can you hear me? Not very well. Yes, yes no. but now I understand it must be my speakers which are in the room. No, uh, I'm okay. Not. No, it's my, I, now I understand Dandi Maharaj. It probably isn't your microphone because now I understand it's my speakers. Hmm, okay. Because also Sri Laker, who I know has a good microphone, they do hear the uh, uh, I just use my computer. True. Anyway, please, Sri Laker, I won't interrupt. Time is valuable. Let us hear about Krishna, his devotees, and devotional service. Um, <sighs> well, we've been um, talking about so many things, and it seems that. Um, it's a sweet ocean when we begin to speak about Krishna consciousness and especially the devotees. It's like a sweet ocean. You can't really come to the end of it and it's always surprising. <laughs> and you were, I was thinking about uh, association while you were speaking, Maharaj, because we're coming and joining here to get association, especially your association. And um, we're hearing many things from the holy lotus mouth of the, the great souls who have descended into this plane to give us connection. And they're, they're, uh, their advice for our lifestyle is so important. But it's not uh, ordinary advice. It is coming from their heart, and it is affecting our heart. And others who are also have their heart affected. By being around them, we are also experiencing something new that's not very definable sometimes. But just being around someone with faith, that faith comes to us. And it's so valuable. We can't even conceive of that kind of value. That faith, uh, it's a very, it's a difficult word. It's a, uh, in English, it has a certain meaning. But Srila Prabhupada said faith means vision. It means actually seeing something that is a, of a divine character. That is something which is very lovable which is very generous and the absolute existence, but full of variety. And someone who has contact with that through love and devotion and surrender, that person's association can't be measured in its value because it affects us. Srila Gurudev said that when someone is remembering the Lord, everyone around them is affected. Every living being, everything around is uh, changed by their remembrance of the Lord. And you were talking about the beautiful atmosphere and surroundings there in the ashram. And of course, the internal remembrance of the Lord is there. And our remembrance that everything exists for the Lord, everything, 
there's not a single thing that doesn't exist for serving the Lord. And when we can remember that, and when, as you were saying, when we're seeing beauty or something that is pleasing to our minds, but to remember that this is for you, my Lord. This exists for you. This is all yours, and it knows it's existing for you. It is conscious substance. And I want to rectify my relationship with reality. I want to be a servant of you. I want to be a servant of the atomic existence around me because it's all more than I am. But so generous and magnanimous in, in its quality. And it's very difficult sometimes to remember that because we have a habit of enjoyment. So we can't really see what it is. But it's very, very wonderful to remember whether we're having some experience which is pleasant for our mind or whether we're having some experience which is unpleasant for my mind, that both are coming to embrace me. And to, at that very extremely tiny moment, there is progress in that remembrance. That this is unpleasant for me, I don't like this, this is bad, this is gone. And then remembering, no, 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 this is good. It has come to help me. It's come to relieve me of so many things. I can't even understand what the surgeon is doing. I don't even know what's wrong with me. But there is progress in every moment and there is divinity in every increment of time, every conception of space and every conception of, of substance. It is all filled with div divinity. So we're trying to remember, and it is a great struggle sometimes <laughs> when the doctor is poking you exactly where it hurts. You just don't, you want to tell them to stop it. <laughs> but we'll remember that the doctor is very, very kind and he knows what he's doing. And then simply by that remembrance, some reciprocation is coming. And we read, um, but in the sermons for just to yesterday, maybe, or the day before, Guru said, what would take thousands of lifetimes can in a moment be, be, uh, be gone simply by bowing down and accepting the lessons that are coming to us. All the lessons, and once learned, like the Lord is reciprocating with that surrender and he's changing our angle of vision. And once learned, then that is not necessary anymore. That lesson isn't necessary, but we can't, we can't write our own curriculum. The Lord has already written it. And Guru Maharaj said that only he knows the purpose of everything. Everything is imbued with divine purpose. Anyway, I'm talking too much, but it's just a couple of things that I kind of remembered. And anyway, just to be around faithful devotees is so nourishing. And we all need it. We want to share it. As you say, we hear something, we feel something, maybe something. We want to share that, but we also have to become acute listeners. <laughs> Guru Maharaj said, you have to learn to see everything with your ears. <laughs> Jai. <laughs> oh, you have stopped. Okay. <laughs> we, are, we are happy you continue. There is no you there. And Sri Lekar, she's been with Abhinava Sundar, Kelly Kadamba, and others. I know their arrival there also. Then others like came and we've been sharing so many things. I've gone again and again to look online. You're keeping everything a secret, Jesse. 
But we are happy to see a stream of morning programs of a reading of Chaitanya Charitamrita and, and Reveal Truth mm. at the moment. And uh, just as in Vila Govind, then Sri Lake, and she does morning, she just already you're doing the program, just have a camera there so that whoever wishes to see can see. And always living readings and with relevant like, personal reflections along the way. And the reading should be lived, not just read a book and okay, I meant to read for 15 minutes and then read something. It's sharing again and sharing what? The words of Srila Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, the words of Srila Prabhupada, the words of Srila Guru, the words of Srila Guru Maharaj. And actually, this is the hope that we can give everybody some uh, enthusiasm, encouragement, some taste for relishing, for hearing the, those messages from the original source, really, as far as possible. And we can just help you know, explain things, because actually some things, <laughs> when we're reading, needs a little background. Otherwise, if somebody is just sitting in front of us and we're reading something, and they really don't know what is what. It's a little mind-blowing about a lot of things. You know, even we've got some very beautiful examples that we love, like tying Krishna around the waist to tie him to a mortar. <laughs> well, you know, if it's your first introduction to God consciousness, it's kind of out there somewhere. And <laughs> where is it out there? It's out there in the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. You've got to have gone through, I don't know how many, but like 10,000 verses, nine cantos before you get to the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. So, no, we get prepared. And not only that, we are reading all of this with the commentaries, with the purports, with the understanding of from Srila Prabhupada. When we're reading Chaitanya Charitamrita. Oh, but this is, sorry, when we're reading Srimad Bhagavatam. And but this is referred to in Chaitanya Charitam. And so, and Krishna looking in Mother Shoda, looking in Krishna's mouth and seeing all the universe. I mean, really, it's out there. If it's your first understanding. People are going to think, what are these people? You know, what are they worshipping? Where they got their ideas from? As I thought about the people in some section, this area in West Africa, when we are doing our traveling before in safari. There's one area where people worship God as a fish. And so what are we, you know, to, you know travelers and you know, going there, seeing that they, people worship God as a fish, we're thinking, you know, these people are really out there. And then what happens when we come to read from Srimad Bhagavatam? God comes as a fish. My goodness. Please don't leave back, back to basics. Oh, why should we on silent? Okay, put on sign. So God, you know, we have to, we, it's valuable to say a few words and not just like read, even if we are, you know, reading, get much happiness from it. It's valuable to, to put in a comment here and there. Hare Krishna, and a very capable commenter is our Paramananda Prabhu. I'm sure many of you too, but Paramananda Prabhu is here and He's in a car which is not moving, so we can ask Paramananda. And it is true, then our Shiva Dandi Papa very kindly reminded us of the speciality of today. And whether you want to follow in that theme, or if you like to follow on as you wish, Prabhu, it is back to basics. Help us all to be firm with our foundation. Yes, Maharaj. I can say something that inspired me during this particular time and hearing your conversation, Shri Kadidi conversation, Maharaj's conversation. Well, today is the Mother Vidyabhushan always connects to Guru Maharaj somehow because of his position. Sri so Guru Maharaj, he composed a wonderful verse where he is describing the main contributions and the, and the status and the position of the Goswamis. And he's saying, 
Jivadhyaya Avirakshitam. Jiva Goswami, he protected the line and not just protected, but also give extra prestige for the general public. I mean, it happened several times. And we, we just actually, we have to remember all the stories, all the pastimes we hear. It's just a drop in the ocean. Krishna Skaraj Goswami keeps saying that I, I, I cannot possibly describe all that happened. So I'm just giving you a little bit drops from that great ocean. So we're hearing something, some pastimes, but it doesn't mean that's it. Nothing else happened. It did happen, no doubt about it. So he did that wonderful service protecting the prestige of Mahaprabhu's line, Mahaprabhu's teachings and Goswami's teachings. And that later came to Baladevi Bhushan, very similar, I mean, to the, to the different degree we cannot say they're same, same, and not different. We can say they're same, same, but different. So to a different degree, he did the same service, protecting the prestige of Gaudiya line, Mahaprabhu's teachings, and all the Mahaprabhu followers by going there and taking the challenge on the request of his spiritual master, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. So he did that, and he got the title Vidya Bhushan. And I remember, I was actually quite curious, why, why is this title? Vidya Bhushan because it sounds a little bit a bit dry to me in a sense the one who is adorned with the knowledge we can say that's one way to present it and then I inquired from Govinda Maharaj once and he said Vidya Bhushan in this particular context means the one who perceives the reality the one who can give and the one who can show that reality to others. So he is the one who is connected to the reality. Reality, the beautiful reality, the divine. And that's what it means to be Vidya Bhushan. He is adorned with that vision. He exists on a different plane. And that came to him by the grace of Mahaprabhu, by the grace of the Vaishnavas. And of course, we cannot, uh, not to mention Govinda, who gave the inspiration the Baldevi devotion, seeing his devotion, he, seeing his love and determination, and also kind of a hopeless situation he was in, and in a sense. And it's the hopeless situation that forced us to take full charge of the Lord. So Govinda, seeing his devotee in peril, appeared himself and literally guided his hand and dictated the Govinda Bhashya. I mean, what else? I mean, there are so many commentaries of Vedanta Sutra, so many Bhashyas. But how beautiful is this? The Lord Govinda himself, the most beautiful form of the Lord, is dictating you the commentary on Vedanta Sutra. And of course, when it was presented to the assembly, not only everyone accepted it, and they were stunned, but all of them, all the different sampradayas, different lineages, different groups of the devotees, they wanted to accept the shelter of Baladevi Dibushan to be initiated into the line, Gaudiya line of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And of course, I mean, we know this story. I don't, don't want to re retell it again. Everyone hears the story. But then they requested, can you accept us into this lineage? But he humbly refused and said, all of you have the place to exist. It is the will of the Lord. So please, you do not disturb. Uh, have some respect for Mahaprabhu's teachings and do not disturb the worship in the temple, Radha Govinda. So that was settled. And that comes to Srila Guru Maharaj, who is Bhakti Rakak. So it's always um, reminds me about Srila Guru Maharaj, Baldevi Jibhushan, Jiva Goswami. And Srila Guru would point, especially in Jiva Goswami, he would say that, that somehow their position is very similar, Guru Maharaj and Jiva Goswami's position, their service in the mood of service, unique but similar. And then Sri Kadiri was saying something about the faith, and that's also reminded me how Govinda Maharaj once said, what is the faith? What is the Shraddha? I mean, Shraddha is not the... I mean, in English, it's very dry. It's very limited in its uh, explanation of... Uh, we cannot translate Shraddha to be the faith. So there was a discussion. I think Shruta Shah Prabhu was there, and I happened to be there. So Govinda Maharaj said, the, the strongest faith, uh, let, me, let me think, how did he put it? The one who can perceive the divine reality, 
This is what the Shraddha is. And, and the strength of your Shraddha, according to the degree of your uh, ability to perceive that divine reality, how much you're connected to that, how much you're giving yourself to that, and you're actually understanding what is real and what is not, and that's what Shraddha is. And the highest the intensity of that, the highest level of Shraddha you have, and they're all, all the uh, different gradations in that, infinite gradations in that, actually. So when you firmly established on vision, maybe you're not yet there, but you firmly established on that vision, you have that acceptance of that reality. You cannot live without it. You want to serve. Uh, you, you want to love that reality. Then the nishta, unshakable faith, comes. And then the taste develops, and we hear about that. And I think, who was saying? Oh, it's Shreka Didi was saying. Uh, quoting how the association with the devotees can promote the faith. Shradhara tir bhakti ranukra So in a natural way it happens due to the association, the famous verse of Kapila Muni. It's all possible. And then, and that can give us actually a connection to Ganga Mata Goswamini along with in countless saintly personalities in our lineage. And she was, she was one of the few, we know, female saints and also female gurus she was quite famous in her service. She was the disciple of Haridas Pandit. If I'm not, please do correct me about details, but I think she was a disciple of Haridas Pandit, who was the disciple of Gadada Pandit. And she was a princess. And I think her pre previous name was Sita Devi. So she came there and she was refused because of, again, the royal lineage. And, but she was very insistent and very determined and seeing her determination her guru gave her initiation, and then she showed the highest degree of vairagya, renunciation. But what kind of vairagya? That vairagya is described in the verse by Sarvabhama Bhattacharya, vairagya, vairagya vidya nidja bhakti yoga. Renouncing everything that is not conduct, conductible to bhakti, development of bhakti. That kind of vairagya, not artificial vairagya. So, and then she goes, she gets the service from her guru to restore uh, the temple in the house of Sarvabhama Bhattacharya. And she goes to Puri and engages in that service. And under her guidance, it's flourishing and it's beautifully restored. And till this day, this this is the building we're visiting every time we go to Puri. So that is the building that was actually restored by Ganga Mata Goswamini. And she stays there. But her fate is such that she, even though she's present on the external plane, she is fully present in the divine lila as well of Lord Jagannath. And there are so many wonderful, inconceivable stories how about these loving exchanges and pastimes between her and Lord Jagannath, but they're rather too intimate to repeat. And then we know how she got the name of Ganga Mata because she's hankering, she wants to go to Ganges, and again today is the Ganges appearance, so she really wants to go there. And we know that so many different Vaishnavas had their residences built there. Advaita Acharya to get closer to the Ganges. He got his residence in Navadvip. Pundarik Vidinit, he who was from Raradesh, he had another residence. And so many other devotees would go to Ganges, anchor to take bath of the Ganges, to worship the Ganges, be near the Ganges. And then uh, she is also anchoring that she wants to go, but service duties and it is impossible. And seeing her desire, Lord Jagannath commands. And there are different uh, ways to tell this story. Lord Jagannath commands the Ganges. Please, you come and you satisfy desire of my dear devotee. And then one day she wakes up. I forgot exactly what happened during this particular pastimes. She either woke up floating in the Ganges or... Anyway, something along those lines. Something. Tr trust me, it was wonderful. In many different ways. <laughs> and the Ganges appeared in... Puri, Jagannath Puri, along with all the other holy rivers. It's all included. When it comes from the Lord, he is giving absolute gifts. There is no shortage. There is no limits to that. If he is bringing the Ganges, believe me, he is bringing every single uh, holy body of water together. And that's how we got that beautiful lake by the house of Sarobam Bhattacharya called Maharaj is the Sveta Ganga. So the Ganga, yes. Maharaj is yeah. our guide there. I have to check by him. And 
The standards See, are our guide. We just show what they have shown. <laughs> well, you, you're fortunate enough to inherit it from the sadhus and we're fortunate enough to know you, Maharaj. So this is Very our good. situation. And I guess I said more than I should by now. But I guess I would just stop here. No, it's really it's really appropriate that we hear and the link between Valerie Nixon and Gangamati Goswamini and the Ganges all linked together. So remembering today. And by the way, you mentioned Pundarik Vidhi Nidhi and Kali Karamba. Many thanks. She's the one she looked up and she found it was Pundarik Vidhi Nidhi who would not bathe uh, in the Ganges, who wouldn't go to the Ganges. He didn't want to see the, the disrespect or, or the misrespect and disrespect of the Ganges. So it's in chapter Chaitanya Bhagavad, Madhilila chapter 7, about Pundarik Vidyanidhi, not bathing in the Ganges. And Chaitanya yes. Bhagavad is the parallel book to Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. And uh, in our lifetime, we can't read everything every day, but in our, they say, buckets, which is, for me, a terrible. I ask people, what does it mean, bucket? And before you kick the button, uh, that just sounds ridiculous. Anyway, to have on our on our you know wish list that we will read the whole Chaitanya Bhagavad at some point, as we do this Parayan, and in Navadi they do the Parayan of Chaitanya Bhagavad, and there is it is Chaitanya Bhagavad, Chaitanya Charitamrita, and Srimad Bhagavad, but of course. It is the wish of Gurudev that he established that Western program, program on the fifth of Srila Guru Maharaj's Samadhi in Navadi. It's Gurudev's wish. We also have the Parayan. Oh, I'm making too much noise. Oh, it's the neighbors. Oh, my goodness. I've got to stop here. They're knocking on the door. Okay, I'll have to stop here. Maharaj, I mean, even if you speak softly, trust me, that vibration penetrates all the spaces and all the walls. And I had a direct experience. Maharaj was giving a 5 a.m. class. One more, one moment. You speak. And I, and I could feel it 300 meters away while I was asleep. And I felt this kind, kind of a vibration. So I had to wake up. And then I understood what it was. It was him talking on back to back the basics and his bhajan kutir and govinda farm and i was literally 300 meters away and i could feel it on a subtle level so that vibration is actually very powerful so regardless you're loud Maharaj doesn't like to be loud or not the people around will feel some disturbance and no doubt a very auspicious disturbance and by the way this is the job of the sadhu to disturb the Greek hostess and to remind them about the true meaning of life. So, Maharaj, you're doing great. I had to answer the door, and I better stop. And it's a sign, it's five o'clock. But anyhow, you may keep going, that's not a problem. So, uh, please excuse, but they, I, maybe when they saw me, they were passive. It's a little early here for the regular world. Okay, I've got to go. Dear devotees, you can give the giants permanent. I end here. My obeisance is for you all. Jai Guru Dev. Jai Guru Dev. Jai Shilabhakti. Sunder Govinda Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai. Jai Shilabhakti Rakashara Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai. Shri Jiva Goswami Ki Jai, Shri Gangamata Goswami Ki Jai, Shri Guru Guru Varga Ki Jai, Shri Ganga Devi Ki Jai, Tvaita Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai, Shri Bhakti Ranjan Madhusudan Maharaj Ki Jai, Shri Lake Kiri Ki Jai, and all Maldanti Shabbat Bhakti Ashwai Dandi Maharaj Ki Jai, and all the assembled devotees Ki Jai, and Gurudev said once, when you give Ki Jais, however short, do not forget to mention the Namacharya, Shila Haridas Thakur, P. Jai. He said, must be mentioned, regardless of your time and space, but he must be mentioned there. My dandavats to everyone, wonderful assembly today. I was very fortunate to have enough connection. 
nice to see Dandi Maharaj taking care of our Navadvip and Clave. Mayapur, actually. It's Mayapur. Yeah, Mayapur. Actually, Kadidi. My dandavats to the residents of the Sweet Lake City. Vam chakal patar besha kripa sindhu beva cha patitaram pavane viva shrami bioda moon. Here you go, Lilith. You're a good disciple of your guru. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> See you next time. Hare Krishna. Haribo. Mm -hmm.